uh, FT win. Winner semis again. And we're starting on Splat Zone's Wahoo World. Probably not the best map for Blob. Um, I don't um, know. I, I, I've seen Bob players say they like this map because you can stand behind zone and just kind of paint it. And that's the main objective of your weapon. You're not going to be trying to hard frag. And yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to frag too well on this map, but I think it can do a lot for painting wise here. Yeah. We'll have to see. Game one, best of five between these two. Um, All right, and there's the block. All right. <laughs> so I believe that uh, looking at all of my research, that is Na uh, Nazu is Terra on the CDS, and Overhaul is the uh, guy I was talking about the one Eric a couple while ago. So yeah, that's who the players are on these teams. Armor coming up very shortly. Uh, although Armor does come up first for FT Win, of course they do have Junior, the big big paint weapon, and this could be a Bio bomb coming quickly from Biscuit actually playing the heavy spotting Remi uh, Nouveau here. Uh, sorry, re Remix here. <laughs> there isn't a heavy spotting Remix. Nouveau. Wait, which one? <laughs> which one is that? <laughs> Um, we got bomb and point sensor, but either way, FT win, very, very convincing first team fight. They played that really, really solid, like a really nice system. And yeah, that was looking like a strong FT win, being a team that, you know, being a team in that team fight, they understood how to beat, and that's really nice coming out from them. Okay, so a couple things to also note about the FT win composition. First of all, try new vote, that makes Pika very happy. Yep. Uh, I see Biscuit is, a, is on the remix right now, which is a pick that we don't really see from him. Shaq's been experimenting with the CDS as well recently. Um, so probably just trying them out for this tournament, or at least in the earlier stages to see how far he gets. Um, because I think that's something that he's been interested in here. Uh, nice push comes to FG here, but it's not able to actually find any picks, which means we expect to see the re-engage here coming in from FG win here very shortly. Uh, Kyo's going to try to step on forward with the Tri-Slasher. Probably can't do a ton underneath the glass, but Shaq going down to that 10 umbrella is definitely going to be massive and definitely going to be a hindrance. Looks like it doesn't matter, though. Be able to come back in and cap the stone to that situation for Dream. FG win playing very, very smart there and giving the space to Dream that they need to to then move forwards and then take going when they need to. Very, very nice two trade from Kyo. That's very, very good. A lot his team take control and most likely he's going to be back you know a little bit quicker at the same time as them so not really anything lost uh 10 on this map we might see the same thing happen honestly as before like 10 just moves in with bubble and fd went don't want to risk anything so they just give them zone and then they walk in afterwards and reclaim it uh although they do use booyah actually this time trying to catch this push which will make sense coming out here as this engagement kicks off but kyo does get taken out early not what you want to see but a lot of control left wins favor still still a lot of control here the bomb rush as well coming in from that the blobber which is able to help cap the zone here, but again, uh, only two members have seen one going down. Kyo actually jumping in here, trying to be a little more aggressive. Uh, Shaq gonna go down here as well, and now control of the sun, very quickly gonna shift over to Dream. Kyo looking for a little bit more value, but it's gonna go down here all of the same, and Dream is going to have just about as commanding of a presence as FT Win had just a second ago, and I don't feel like FT Win has a lot of these uh, options, or as many options, to push back into the zone. They'll be relying around picks from a Booyah Bomb or something like that. In order or a Bomb. <laughs> or a bomb as we saw come out. They do have a very bomb heavy, uh, bomb spam heavy composition. So, you know, definitely gonna be able to make use of that. They do manage to cap the zone, but they're not really on it right now. And actually two of the members do go down. That's Yuga Ace pushing up right now. And it looks like Yuga Ace actually being very, very kind of a offensive Tentabrella in the sense that he goes for the fights. You know, a lot of Tentabrellas push up. They try to take space and they play kind of very aggro, but they're not actually kind of playing offensive and trying to take these fights. Yuga Ace, however, I've seen him taking a lot of these engagements and winning them out. So clearly, clearly putting a lot of work on that front for his team. And considering the other three weapons are all very passive, I think it makes sense that you play like that in this comp. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, again, this is one of the things that we were saying where probably not going to have the best break back in here for FD win, especially given that Tenebrella when it's able to get set up. Uh, the H3 also able to pump out a lot from that rank. Here comes the Ink Storm coming in, actually dueling on top of the zone here. All, all sorts of storms coming in, but a three down situation is going to be the result of that storm. And now it looks like Dream here is actually going to be able to go ahead and take the knockout. I believe with one going down here, Kyo's able to find a trade, but that is going to be the end of the game. Dream goes up 1-0. Dream goes up one up in the first game, and they uh, that was very well played by both sides. I think the Dream in the end, uh, ooh, my monitor just went black, uh, and my oh, capture God. and my capture card has frozen on stream. Uh, oh, it's resumed on stream, oh. but my monitor's still black. And we're back. Oh, I was uh, <laughs> I was worried there. I was really worried there. But sorry, do you want to uh, continue from what I got distracted by when everything went black and I thought I had a power cut? I don't know that I have uh, any other comments. Okay. Um, I feel like, again, I think that comes down to composition. I think the Tan Umbrella was just able to kind of get set up, and it was much more of a nuisance for FD-Win to kind of run around than they were expecting. Because um, they're really relying on, as we mentioned, bomb picks and armor. 
yep. to run in, right? They they don't have a lot of range. Uh, CDS doesn't have a ton of killing power. Um, like CDS has a decent amount, but like it's not like going to be that thing like a carpet roller, like a tri slosher, or even a slosher, right? And, and Kyo being on that tri slosher means that there's going to be even less range there for them to be able to use. Kyo's going to be switching over to the soda slosher as we head on to Wahoo World, which is actually something that probably is going to get locked out even more than the last battle here in Egypt. Very, very, very different uh, style coming from FGW. Well, not very, very, but I'd say it's from what we've seen them play ever before. But Kyo makes sense on this weapon, does very, very well, taking it out and getting a very early first pick. Trying to find some more now, going aggressive onto the enemy team as they're being pressured by the Stingray, but doesn't actually find anything. The Stingray will run. Kyo now is going to try and take out these other members of the uh, of Dream, but does get taken out of the H3 in the end. And it looks like the control will go over to Dream, but I wouldn't be surprised if FG1 go for a quick push in, considering the uh, you know the man advantage they have. However, they do lose Mercy early, so that will most likely be Dream taking full control. Yeah, it looks like uh, one is going to go down there with that H3, but you is doing a very good job. Like, again, this Tenebrella is such a nuisance. Look at how much time even that Tenebrella was able to wear down in that 1v2 situation. Even a 1v3 situation, that Tenebrella is certainly going to be something uh, of a nuisance here for FC win to deal with. Looks like they were able to take back control, and now they're going to be able to move back in here. Uh, now fighting that pick on the Tenebrella, which means the push powers are going to be there for a little bit of time. Two down situation here for Dream, which means the time is going to continue ticking in FC win's favor. It will continue ticking in FT win's favor, and it looks like they're not quite going to get take the lead, but it will... Oh, actually, they might take the lead here. It's very, very hard to say. Very, very scrum fight going down on mid. The armor almost allowed the HP to live, but Kyo, is that going to be getting it? Instead of helping Zone, just go for the extra pick, and I like that play. Your weapon is going to help with a lot of painting, so why not go for the spawn camp and allow your team to deal with what's going down down there? Will not able to find the blob, but also not going down to it, so putting a lot of pressure on, trying to find it again, but no, not quite. Kyo just going to keep putting pressure on this top half, and I think Slosha Deco does a really, really good job of that here. By the way, what you didn't see uh, in order to cap the zone earlier was Yuga Ace getting a double uh, down beneath the zone. Um, so that's kind of what switched the zone back in favor of Dream. But FD Lin was able to find the rate cap, and now they're going to be able to take this lead. Not uh, then the cap's going to come back the other direction here. Uh, Inkstorm does come out here to fly a little. I don't. I don't actually know where that cloud's going. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, it looks like this is going to flip back the other direction here. And again, this is the sort of thing that this, uh, again, the Tenebrella can do so much of. Stingray is going to provide a lot of value here on Skip Villain, given how wide and spread out this map tends to be. Uh, but it looks like FT1 might have found a route back into zone. The blob from the top, though, is continuing to launch bubbles into the zone. Uh, and FT1 finally able to find the cap. Everyone's able to find the cap, but it's still in the situation. And this bomb rush going through the blob has been so instrumental in turning these fights. I feel like that's the one big thing about Blob of Deco. You have Sprinkler, you have a high paying weapon. You could just safely paint and churn out so many suction rushes. That's clearly kind of the objective of what they're doing here. And I think on a map like this, we're seeing the strength of it. It's turning these fights and these zone caps so, so often. They do take out the temp for going in right now. They have an armor to assist them in this push and Stingray too. So it will most likely be the cap. They need to take out the CDS and they do. In fact, that's going to be a full wipe coming out as FT win now take full control. The 10 though drops in on the beacon. And now Shaq needs to back up. They could get this jump on Kyo if they're not careful. And he's able to clean that one up. Kyo goes down here. Means that slang power and that pressure on the front line isn't really going to be uh, there. And now Yuga is just being such a commanding presence here. Again, on this time of the level, on forward with the bubbles. And FT1 is forced to back away to respect that. Uh, Biscuit, though, is going to go back down on the back lines to Terra on those CDS here. Uh, and now you see the zone flip back. Imagine to see this back here the direction that was perhaps a little bit of an overextension coming in from Dream. And FT1 looking to clean this one up. Actually, looking to see a little this one help, but unfortunately, will get taken out by the blob oh. player as they start painting everything up. It's a 3v3 situation, and all oh, the random blobs find Shaq. That's so, so good for them. And now they're going to keep painting, they're going to get control, and it's going to go over into the favor of Dream. Joe dropping early, will get taken out. That's not what you want to see going into the last minute of the game soon. Final minute of this game here. And for those of you just joining us, uh, actually, wait, Matt, Dream took game one, not FT win. Um, Oops. So you might need. You might I'm going to adjust that right now. Around, but, uh, Dream is looking to go ahead and take this one just the same. You'll notice how far you get Ace's push forward. Actually, you guys can't really see that right now. Uh, there you go. <laughs> 
right when the Teddy Brother got clapped around. Great. Just what I wanted to make that point is what Auto Camp's gonna show it. Alright. Nonetheless, 43 seconds here left to go in FT1 starting to move back into the zone to try to cap this one. Uh Yuga Ace has free spawn here, back down with those beacons, and now a uh, more pressure coming in here from that H3 in the top. Able to paint over the zone here. Uh FT1 looking stuff on forward. Now with that ink armor, we're gonna go one down. Shack goes down here as well. And that's gonna mean that they're not going to have this four on four team fight that they're looking for here towards the end of the game. They really need to find this cap here soon, and they're quickly running out of time. This team needs needs fight pick on this Tentabrella, but it doesn't look like it will actually find nothing. There's only 10 points left for FT1 to go back in and take zone, and it really looks like this is gonna be the shutout from Dream. Joe's down the top, Shaq does drop, but unfortunately, is not gonna happen. And FT win there. Looks like they were falling apart a bit. They were playing really, really well in the first game. Kind of had that cohesion to them. And you could you could see that in their gameplay. They had really strong cohesion. They just kind of fell apart and got locked out. I feel like on that map, they lost that cohesion a little bit. I don't know if it was how they were trying to play with the bucket controlling the top and they lost that coordination they normally have. But it definitely looks like, you know, something was going on, you know, in the comms, in the structure of their team play that allowed that to fall apart there. Also, thank you very much for the raid. That's to be too, dude. Yeah, and welcome everybody. Uh, this is in the zone 21. This is a splat zones only tournament that features a lot of high level names. Um, so it's just a straight double elimination tournament. We are in winner semifinals, which is probably about halfway through the event. We started at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, so about two hours ago. Um, so still plenty more Splatoon to stick around for. Go do something else. Go take a stretch break and come back because uh, we're just getting started in terms of the high level splatoon we're currently watching ft win uh which is you know north american champion ft win you know those guys uh they're going up against dream which is a high level japanese pickup that uh was formed just for this tournament so yep. uh that's kind of where we are right now um hope y'all are stick around and enjoying some of the action here on these random maps including kelp dome which we're about to see for game three and that is probably not what FT Win wants to see. Definitely agree with you. And a small note for the other side of the bracket before we get into this game. Radiance dropped 3-1 to one to Key to My Love. That being Zeraz and Mika from Freeze, as well as Key, uh, who is currently free agent, and Jared from Starburst. So, extremely strong pickup. Wow. Takes down Radiance 3-1. to one, And yeah, I can't say I expected it, but I also wouldn't say it was completely unexpected. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would probably be a relatively even matchup, especially when you read off those players. You're like, okay, yeah, all these players are like very high level players. You probably would have imagined that the glue of Radiance would have been able to be larger than the sum of their parts. Uh, but maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more. We'll be seeing Key to My Love next in Winner's Finals versus the winner of this set, which very well could be Dream if they close it out with this game. Again, this map probably favoring them, given the fact they've got that blob that can bounce off of a bunch of walls, and given the fact that that Tan Umbrella can be such a nuisance, especially in some of these lockout situations, FT win, definitely going to have to be careful of that. Biscuit, though, back on the comfort pick. That's what we like to see. Been playing a lot of these backline stuff once all this tournament, but get some early, early pressure with the Nautilus. Able to take out one, Kyoto take out two, and that's going to be FT win getting first control. I really think they need this first control. It's going to be a hard map to push back into if they get locked out, so it was very important they won that team fight, and very good they did. But it's going to be hard no matter when they get locked out, right? Um, because at, yeah. at the end of the day, you have to imagine there's going to be a pushback in. We're going to have to see how FT Win plays this on the holding side. It looks like Terra pushed up a little bit too far. It's going to be a taken down on those CDS. Uh, and now already a two-down situation for Dream. FT Win continues to sweep the rest of this fight, picking off one member at a time. Beautifully well played by them. I mean, you say that's when they get locked out. They might not have to get locked out. They might be the ones doing that job. Uh, it is a very hard map to push back into, so I wouldn't be surprised they do. However, a lot of pain being put on to Biscuit and Kyo right now doesn't really let them move. And Kyo gets the trade out of the situation, but Biscuit going down isn't good. This is most likely going to be the turnaround, and it finally is. That's going to be FD Win losing their control and Dream taking pressure. FD Win need to be fast to put pressure back onto mid, because if they don't put any pressure onto mid and they give up too much control, there's going to be bad things happening. But the classic, someone dies to a bomb on the shield, and now it's going to be FD Win with a bad advantage. Now that Tanabra look going down as well. Again, FD Win has a perfect opportunity to put back in. Notice Nazu uh, is coming back on down here, but now we turn our attention back to this blob. Going to get swarmed on and surrounded by some of these members of FD Win. That is going to mean the cap goes back to pink as the Ink Storm comes out here to try to help all along with that. Yuga Ace has made an appearance here, but again, diving into three members all surrounding you, even when you are the Tentabrella, means you're probably not going to survive that. And again, FD Win finds the retake after capitalizing on overextensions at those.
those given moments in time coming out from Dream. And the retake was crucial because if, if we allowed the enemy team to get full control, it was not going to go well. But a trade is going to come out. Very, very nice punish from Peace. Peace has been playing a nice game so far, getting the right punishes, but it's going to be a 2v2 situation. So right now, that's going to be Dream trying to push in, but gets taken out. Uh, the CDS does, and now it's just going to be Shaq trying to ward off Peace, but Peace putting in a lot of work on this blah blah, but will allow Dream to start moving forward, but it's still a fight here. Joe comes back in with the tri-slash. going to try and find something, but no. Very, very smart play from Dream. Won't allow him to get through, and that is finally going to be full control for Dream, and they are now looking for this lockout we've been talking about. Might not be able to find it here, at least not as strong as they might like. Uh, it is worth noting, still plenty of time left in this game. So even if Dream gets like two or three more pushes just like that, still can very much walk away with the victory here. Gonna have to see exactly how to win uh, Ops right back in. But you'll notice Dream is playing much more cautious, much more conservative than they were playing earlier. Oftentimes sticking around the zone. And here comes specials coming in from Rusty when you notice the Ink Storm. And here comes the Ink Armor as well as they try to collapse around this biscuit, trying to find some value with this Nautilus. Uh, not quite able to do just that. As a matter of fact, FT Win now starts to ignore the Tentabrella, now collapsing around the Tentabrella, picking that side of the zone and able to translate that into a zone cap. Uh, well done by them. And it looks like they're going to be able to convert this into a hold as well with those CDS going down. The Blob is the last one up for Dream, way up in that top left corner. Blob last one up, and Blob is going to be able to hold the ground, though. That's what it does so well. You can just put that pressure on, you can keep standing on the socks, and it won't allow them to move forward, which will allow an easy situation for Dream to move back in, especially with the assistance of the Cloud, which we've seen how much Cloud can do today, but they don't have much time. Only 10 points remaining. Bubble Blow gets picked, uh, popped alongside, but Yuga Ace gets taken down, so no much utilization off that. Shaq now getting traded, which will allow this to be a 3v3 situation, but Overhaul being taken down on the H3. No one left on Dream. That's going to be FD Win finally putting some footing in this series and turning it into a 2 1 situation. 2-1. Can FD win pull out the bracket reset? Get your votes in chat now. Uh, reverse sweep. Uh, Thank you very much. Or reverse sweep. That's what I meant. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm in commentary mode today. I'm in analysis mode today. I am not in TO mode today. Um, so, nice try. Um, but, good stuff to see there by FD win. And honestly... I feel like that's kind of what we were expecting. Um, in a game where there are no lockouts, FT wins probably going to have the individual skill and probably going to be able to push back in in order to take care of business. Because, again, so there's a difference between take backs, in my opinion, and actual lockouts. Lockouts are when you're so far ahead of the zone, you're applying pressure from safe distances. It's like spawn camping, right? Um, whereas we didn't see that like at all in that past game. There was no one that was really trying to pull off flanks or infiltrate the enemy base there on Kelptum, uh, because a lot of that was, you know, some of these scrappier fights that uh, ultimately weren't fully able to translate quickly into large amounts of map control. They don't see the map coming up, K-Bot. Okay, it's Warlight. <laughs> Oh. I I, uh, I I I feel bad for FD Win. Um, I feel bad because I I, I want to see maps where we can really see these teams fight on even ground, and I just feel like this map screams dream to me. This map totally screams dream. When you get the tent pushing up on this map, it does so much. Lockouts are very, very easy. Not only that, Blob Blob spamming down the streets and spamming back onto zone using the bomb rush. All clouds go back in. Everything about this map screams dream. FD win are going to need a lot to continue this reverse sweep. It's going to be a tough game, but I don't doubt that they can do it. I really like them putting no uh, Biscuit back on Nort. I think that I like their backline compositions and the compositions themselves aren't bad, but putting, uh, you know, such a strong player back on their comfort pick really, really worked out for your team. And I liked that transition. Hopefully, they're going to be able to continue that momentum into the next game, but it's an uphill battle on this map. It definitely is an uphill battle. And again, if we're talking about these situations where uh, Dream is able to convert on a lot of these lockout situations, we mentioned this early in the tournament, Walla Warehouse, probably the easiest single map to lock out on in Splatsuk. So uh, we'll have to see if that is something that can uh, come through here. But actually, composition changes coming out of Dream, Vanilla 96 and Light Tetra Duels. All right, now I'm unsure if it's Orion or Terra playing on the Switch, because I know they're brothers. But either way, that's going to be FD Win playing, again, very, very smart. This is the FD Win that we are used to saying. They hold back, they wave the enemy team to overextend a little bit, they give them zone, and then they just move in with their armor, and they crush you. Very, very well played, and the control is exactly what they need to avoid the lockout situation happening right now. They have... Uh, Cloud and Inkjet at the ready to start moving forward. And that's going to be very good. Getting the chip damage along with the Inkjet could lead to a very, very, very powerful anti-push coming out from FD Win. 
FD win. Actually deciding not to go for the, or the defensive engage. And now you'll notice the Inkstorm comes out here. Actually able to pick off the Tetrachilles on that far side. Now Biscuit and the Inkjet looking for a little bit more. Is able to collapse around these last members here. Alive for Dream. The 96 overhaul. The last one up. And is going to get taken down here as well. So again, FD win plays that perfectly. Find the person advantage, find the squid advantage, four versus three to convert that into a one fight. Uh, and now all of a sudden, FT wins the ones Ooh. that are going to be able to probably come back with us. Yeah, this is looking good for FT win. It's only 10 points remaining. The 10 got taken down. A miracle is going to need to come through. Bomb Rush, though, will help. Bomb Rush and armor. But the 96 player goes down too. Ned, who's going to move into zone and need to do a lot to get this a turn, but it's not going to happen. That is going to be FT win. Clean lockout, making it a 2-2 two two and putting us onto match point. Reverse sweep coming if uh, FT wins able to take the next one, K-Bot. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I will say there, like, again, I don't think that was a lockout, right? Uh, that, uh, that, was that was a lockout. Okay, hang on. The first fight, the or the second fight, I don't think the second fight was because FT win was locking out. The second fight was actually like something where FT win was able to win the fight that ensued because they were able to manipulate. Like a lockout, by my standards, is you're getting picks here or there because you're not allowing the team to charge up specials and, you know, engage in some kind of a fashion, right? That's my definition of a lockout. FT win was sitting on top of zone. Uh, they collapsed around the one member up there on top, and then they all pushed back on to the three members that came through on the right side. Uh, I don't know that that was necessarily a lockout because there was a semblance of an engage that was made, and I think it did stall the zone, at least for a moment. Um, but it, it, I mean, frankly, doesn't matter. FT win still was able to win the game, still was able to win the fight, uh, and win that one, and then the ensuing in order to close out the game. Because again, I think they know that if they give that control over to their opponents, it is going to be very difficult to wrench it back. I will say, the problem with your definition of a lockout is that's just not how FD win plays. FD win? No, RT. absolutely. That's, that's the point. <laughs> but, 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 the, but the thing is, I don't think that's what a, lock, a lockout is locking out the other team. They locked out the other team. They don't get control by running into the enemy spawn. They get control by playing in smart positions, allowing the enemy team to overextend the positions they might not want to, and then collapsing on them. That's FD win style. I, 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 I think I think debating semantics I, isn't really the play here, I honestly. <laughs> I, I don't that think to make, I don't think to make some to play. We're moving on to Anchovy Games on Splat Zone. So this map right here, at first when I initially saw it, screamed FD win to me. However, it also screams dream to me. I think that Tent and Blob get so much done on this map, you can't really say that either team has a strong advantage. Nazu is almost definitely Terra now, going over to the E leader. Terra. Um, uh, hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to check on that later because that is not terrific. <laughs> Ter no, Terra. Yes, it was. Terror. I thought Terror was an E-leader made at one point. Terror has never played Charger. Either way, fight's getting in here right now. Biscuit gets taken out by Yuga. He's pushing up very aggressively. FD win not able to play as passive they might have wanted to to go back in this time as Biscuit gets taken out. And that is going to be the first control going over to Dream. Exactly what they want to control this game. And very nice shot from Yuga. Oh. Stopping Shaq as they're going to start moving forwards now. Three down situation there. That's not what you want to see. I imagine Yuga is going to hop on this fan. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting to try to go for a little bit more of a forward position here, but actually quite comfortable sitting around. Okay, now trying to go for that forward position, deploying that canopy. This is what I was expecting to come out of the Tenebrella, and now flanking around from the side, is able to find one onto Biscuit there. I think that was all taken off camera um, as I'm kind of watching the overhead view here, but well done there in order to shut that down. Now with the squid disadvantage on the map, that squid is going to find it very difficult to push back in uh, onto this zone. 30 ticks of the timer here left to go before FT win gets shut out. Yeah, there's not much long left. It's only 20 more. They really need to start moving in right now. But look, the blob just put so much pressure. No one can move into it, but the armor comes through. Very nice flank at the same time. Will and Lamb just start collapsing onto the zone. They get the cap, they get the turnaround. That's what they need to stop the series being over immediately. However, they need to still control the rest of the game right now. The fight isn't one for FD win. However, that pick up to Nazi will help as they try and control the areas of the zone. We'll have to see what's going on. It's still not one for FD win. They just got control of the zone. There's still two players sitting on uh, that far left side here uh, for Dream, being that Tabrella and that Blob. Uh, Tabrella finally is going to go down here. Blob is going to be traded out with Kyo. Uh, and so now FD win might have a little bit more of a sense of control finally, but that took ages in order to try to develop here. And now they're not even in positions here where they can get, you know, 
advantageous uh, positions. We're going to have to see if they can win team fights like they won that one on Walleye Warehouse. Uh, here comes a little bit more of an engage that Ink Storm going to get thrown onto his own here, and the Tenebrella steps on forward here with that stamp. Now it's immediately a two versus one situation. As you see, FT Wind starting to collapse around that. They're going to move back into the zone recap this take out the h3 now they're looking for the blob here forcing the jump back out of nazu and that is exactly what ft wind does so so well yep yeah, ft wind does it so so well now they have control we're just happy to see because it, it was looking scary if they didn't have control on this map first that cop i was scared but they got it and now that's gonna be so so good for them because it's similar thing control style anyway they don't have the carbon but try can play in a similar style they have that nautilus and they have a more aggressive team overall so i feel like they can play in these corners try take people out but they can't take anyone out if they're just staying back and rather than engaging onto the zone they're just buying bomb rush from miles away and that just puts so much pressure on they're now able to move forward with these picks from peace and that's gonna be really really good to get the control very well played by dream to get the three control very well played. Kill goes down the front line. Then they take care of, I think that was Biscuit, the next one down. Or maybe it was Shaq, the next one down. I don't even remember at this point. But again, Dream, takes to your own medicine after you win. Picking off one at a time to sweep back through the zone. And now they have plenty of control. Now you notice the blob set up on the street. You notice the H3 there as well, continuing to apply the pressure here. It's going to have uh, an Incomer here relatively shortly. But an Incomer of FT Win's own coming on out. It claps on the H3. Now Biscuit looking for uh, this blob player. Uh, while the rest of FT Win going into zone again. And beautifully played, beautiful teamwork, beautiful synergies. FT Win is able to roll right back through the zone and take the cap. Nice pick onto Biscuit. Will not allow him to get up and set him into a position. And I feel like Biscuit is the key player on FT Win that you always set up in, want to be set up in the perfect position. So actually a key pick from Peace there. Dream are ready to push back in as well. They have the boxes ready. They have the armor. They're about to come online with the hammer. So this is going to be the push coming through. Armor is popped by FT Win early. They don't want to get taken out and they take out Yuga as a result. Very, very good. And now a cloud comes out from Kyo. This is perfect. It looks like the HP player is going to try and drop down, but no, playing at the perfect range with the armor won't allow Kyo to take him out. It's going to be trying to fight Shaq, but Shaq gets the kill. Shaq now is going to be fighting on zone, pops the cloud. Uh, uh, control has not gone over to Dream, and the uh, Control might flip as long as they can deal with this hammer, but the hammer comes through. You guys absolutely clutching up here, and that's going to be Dream retaking control of the zone with the lead. Yuga Ace with the clutch on the hammer. Well done by Yuga is able to find that double and then Biscuit goes down right afterwards. FT Win losing control, but now they have to come back in. Kyo is actually able to find peace. Now looking for one on Nazu. Kyo coming up big for FT Win and now they're moving back into the zone. They have a penalty to wear through here and it's going to come down to an overtime push. Can FT Win pull it out and clutch it up when it matters most? They're able to take care of the HP on the other side of the map and now they're starting to get set up, winning for the response coming in from Dream. Dream needs to respond here. Yuga Ace on the flank is getting ready to push here, but they spot him out. They're throwing bombs, they're not allowing tapping. Yuga Ace knows. And the hammers are the ready though. It's gonna come along with the bomb rush, try and push on his own, along with its armor, along with the shield. But uh, Peace gets taken out early, but so does Kyo. It's trading, but the lead gets split. A hammer comes out, gets a first pick, but no, no one's painting the zone. And his owners, no. <laughs> the answer is no, and FD win take the series 3 2 over Dream. What a set. Oh, that couldn't have been any better timed for FT Win. That push was just mere seconds late uh, of actually coming in clutch. And wow, that was a thriller of a game five. Um, whoo! Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I, I really like that from FT Win. The tournament to go through. I, I really loved that for FT Win because they ditched their kind of more traditional compositions they were trying to lean towards with Biscuit on the Heavy and Biscuit on the Custom Chat Sculpture. They went to their comfort. They just put Biscuit on Nort and they tore it up. They bring it back through three difficult maps. You wouldn't expect Warlight or Kelp Dome especially to be good maps for FT Win at all. They're very, very difficult. Not only that, Tent does so well on Anchovy, right? They, they were three maps, like, that were extreme uphill fights for FT Win to try and break through to take that series but they did regardless they took the reverse sweep and they won the set they're now going to be up in winners finals against key to my heart which will be the pickup of jared zera's key and mika